All right, hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah for another Shabbat, another opportunity to study his word and to look at the words of Yahusha and to see what we can learn this morning. So, Brother Aaron, if you will, take us from Matthew 26, verse 30, all the way down to 35, and we'll take a look and see what it speaks to you. And having sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Yahuwah said to them, All of you shall stumble in me this night. For it has been written, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I shall go before you into Galil, Galilee. And Kepha, Peter, answering, said to him, Even if all stumble in you, I shall never stumble. Yahushua said to him, Truly, I say to you that this night, before the cock crows, you shall deny me three times. Kepha said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. All the top ones said the same too. What this says to me is that is that Yahushua knows what's coming. So he's meant so he's mentally and physically preparing his, his disciples for um when that time comes because he knows he's gonna be arrested because he he was already shown this in, in visions and stuff so so <clears throat> so yeah he's basically um he's telling his taught ones that he is um uh, he's he knows he's gonna die and that he will that when he does, he'll he'll go before him. And Peter was like, no, no, no. I don't care, I don't care what you say, I'm not gonna deny you. And Yush was and Yush foretold something else for Peter because Peter was like, okay, I'm not running from you. Because he knew knows how Peter he knows Peter's loyalty to Yahusha. He's very he's very loyal. So if you so basically. He's telling Peter, okay, since you don't you won't run, but you will deny me. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I, uh it, it's interesting. Now we have other accounts of this as well, uh, that I want us to take a look at, see if there's any variations that we see there. Um we see the same situation in Mark 14. 26 through 31. I'll go ahead and read this part. It says, And having sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Yahushua said to them, All of you shall stumble in me this night, for it has been written, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. In Zechariah 13, 7 is the fulfillment of that prophecy. But after I am raised, I shall go before you to Galilee, or Galileo, and Kepha said to him, even if all shall stumble, yet not I. And Yahushua said to him, truly, I say to you today, this night before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. But he spoke more strongly, more boldly. If I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. And they all said the same. Uh, I believe we have one other in the same. Yes, in Luke twenty-two thirty-one through thirty-four, and the master said, "Simon, Simon, see, Hasatan has asked for you to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your beliefs shall not fail, and when you have turned." strengthen your brothers and he said to him master i am prepared to go with you both to prison and to death and he said i say to you kepha the cock shall not crow at all today until you have denied me three times that you know me interesting perspective that we see that comes from our brother kepha you know he feel very strong in his in his confidence and his trust in Yahuwah and Yahusha, of course, um, that he would be 
able to stand beside him, that he's even willing to go to prison and even to death. But yet we know what happens as the, con the story continues. Um, but I just find it interesting as we look at these verses, what comes forth? What do we see in these in these uh, these declarations? You know, and each one of us at times will have this boldness. But what shall happen when we actually face the situation? You know, we see uh, even a, a little bit of pride, if we will, in in Kepho or Peter, that he would make this kind of statement that all shall stumble and fall, but not me. I shall be there and I shall not deny you. And But Yahushua knew better. And he was preparing him and the others. And I still don't know if they fully grasp the, the vastness of what he's telling them is coming. Because we're going to see as we continue in this study a little bit more um, about how they fail him, even this very night. Now, if you remember last week, we kind of went ahead a little bit to show the 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 uh, the turning over, if you will, of, of Yahusha by um, by Yehuda or or Judas. Uh, I wanted to track back a little bit to kind of give us that that picture of what happened the night before. You know what happened. You know what did what did Yahusha speak to his disciples in preparing them for what was coming, and so we can start to build this this picture a little bit more. Some of the uh, cross references to to these I have pulled out and I'll just start with uh, Mark 14 26 where it says and having sung a song interesting that they they began this journey with a song before they went up to the Mount of Olives we also see in Luke 21 37 and in the day time he was teaching in the temple and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. So this was a place that he frequent. He frequented. Uh, he would go there to pray. We see in Luke twenty two thirty nine, and he came out and he went and was uh, at the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. So they were familiar with coming to this place. Again, we see in Luke twenty two thirty nine. The Yahushua went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. Now we see in Psalms 81, 1 through 4, it says, Sing aloud to Elohim our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the Elohim of Jacob. Mark 14, 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And again, another one is in Ephesians 5, 19 and 20 speaking to themselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to Yahuwah. So there's something that's preparing them even before they go to the Mount of Olives with the singing and, and the hymns and the making a melody in their hearts to Yahuwah. As we continue on where, where Yahushua says in Mark 14, 27, when he said to them, all of you shall stumble in me this night. For it has been written, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And of course, this is in Zechariah 13, 7, which says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, declares Yahuwah of hosts. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones. Interesting how this is being foretold. He's, he's telling them, what is about to come to kind of prepare them. Matthew eleven six says, Baruch is the one who does not fall away on account of me. And interesting how, in a sense, they all did kind of fall away at that moment when they were scattered. They were fearful. Reality came. You know, uh, we've all had moments where we face difficulties, trials, and tribulations in this, in this walk. Where do we turn to? Do we turn to the to the Word? Do we to turn to a prayer and to the Father, to Yahusha, to ask for guidance and help, or do we trust in our flesh, which you know very powerful? 
as, as a couple have already testified today, you know, how, you know, in these moments, you know, Hasatan comes and he tries to tempt us. He tries to use our emotions and our flesh to, to turn us away to make us look inward to ourselves and to, to follow after the emotions that we feel. We see in John 16, 32, he says, look, an hour is coming and has already come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and you will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. This is another word to you and I. When we feel alone, when we feel like there's nobody beside us, we got to know. The Father is always with us. He's that close that we can turn to him in prayer, as we're going to see that Yahushua does during this time of his difficulty and, and his troubles, that he knows is coming. And we know that but we're going to go a little bit deeper into what that has to do with as well. Again, 30, uh, Psalms 38, 11, my lovers and my friends stand aloft from my, my sore and my kinsmen stand far off. Another picture, another image that we can see of during the time that's about to come of what's going to happen. As we look at the next verse that we've examined here, but after I am raised, I shall go before you to Galilee or Galil. We see another cross reference to this in Matthew 28, verse 7. He says, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. Matthew 28, 10. Do not be afraid, said Yahushua. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Again, in Matthew 28, 16. Meanwhile, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain that Yahushua had designated. And we also see in Mark 16, 7. But go, tell his disciples and Kepha, Interesting that he points out Kepha there. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So we have all of these references that we, we see that they actually did follow his, his direction. That he was preparing for them so that when, when they seen what was going to take place, that they knew his words were true. Again, Mark 19, or 14, 29, and 30 says, Kepha said to him, Even if all stumble, yet not I. And Yahushua said to him, Truly I say to you today, this night before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Matthew 26, 34 picks up on it and says, Tell, or truly I tell you, Yahushua declared, This very night before the, the rooster crows, you will deny, deny me three times. We also see this again in Luke 22:33, where it says, Adon said, or Lord or Master, if you will, said Kepha, I am ready to go with you even to prison and to death. Do, those, do you remember those words? Did he actually follow those words? See, this is another example to you and I. You know, we think that we're going to act a certain way until that moment of time comes where we actually have to do something. Are we going to do? Are we going to follow? Are we going to be fearful and turn away? These are words that are written so that you can, and I can examine them. And we can look at ourselves and see how would we respond. John 13, 37, again, echoes this. It says, Adon, said Kepha, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Mark 14, 29. But Kepha said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will not, I will not. Again, we feeling pretty confident in his stance. Luke 22, 33, and he said to him, Adon, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. John 21, 15, and when they had finished eating, Yahushua said to Simon, Kepha, Simon, son of Yehokanan, do you love me more than these? Yes, Adon, he answered. You know I love you. Yahushua replied, feed my lambs. So he was preparing Kepha, even though he knew that Kepha would deny him at the moment of his, of his troubles, of his difficulties. But yet he had confidence that 
that he would turn around, that he would recognize his failure, and he put him into this regard to feed his lambs. Yahushua had confidence in him, even though he knew he would stumble. Same thing with you and I. He knows where we're going to stumble. We're going to fail from time to time. We need to keep the amuna. We need to continue to turn to his word and to prayer, to fasting, those kind of things that we're called to do to, 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 to maintain a strong stance in our walk. Hallelujah. John 13, 36 to 38. Simon Kepha said unto him, Adon, where are you going? Yahushua answered him, where I go, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. He was telling him again, preparing him, that he's not going to be able to go, but at some point he will come. Psalm 17:5. Hold up your goings in your path, that my footsteps slip not. Psalms 119, verses 116 and 17. Uphold me according to your word, that I may live. And let me not be ashamed of my hope. Again, we see in Proverbs 16, verses 18 and 19, pride goes before the destruction and haughty spirit before the fall. I ask you, is this something that we are seeing in Kepha? Something that we need to look at because we can definitely see in his reactions and how he, how he reacted during this moment in time, how would we respond? We're going to look at also the cross references of Mark 14, 31. But he spoke more strongly. I have to die with you. I shall not deny you. And they all said the same. Interesting. They all said the same. They all felt the same way when they were in the presence of Yahushua. But of course, when the moment came, we know what happened. A couple cross references for that, and then we'll go turn to the hands. Matthew 20, verses 22 and 23. But Yahushua answered and said, You know not what you ask. You are, are you able to drink the cup that I shall drink of? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. Proverbs 28, 14. Happy is the man that fears always, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in Ruach. Hallelujah. You know, when we look at these words that are spoken, we understand the actions that are taken by the disciples in this moment. You know, fear comes upon them. They don't want to be caught up. They don't want to be, you know, in the same position where they're, you know, even though they had said that they would, they would strongly be there on his in his corner. But yet we see a different story. Praise the Father, you know, that, that he has patience with us and, you know, that he, that he does... Uh, Oh, let me go back here again. All right. You know, that, that, that he has confidence in you and I that, you know, these words that we're reading are going to speak to us and that they're going to reveal to us, you know, in our times of weakness, that we need to be turning to these examples and that we can look and we can see that you and I are going to have moments of weakness. It's, you know, as it was said, I believe it was Brother Dean that you said, you know, you know, I'm only human. You know, and that's a, is a somewhat of a true statement in, in many ways, you know, because we are made of flesh, which is weak, as Sister Kim said, you know, the verse that she had. But the, but the Ruach is willing. It is strong. It's how we turn to things, how we walk in these things that matter, you know. And these examples that we see here, you know, that are spoken are for you and I's edification so that, you know, as we go through difficulties and there may be a come a time when we're going to also have to stand as, as the disciples did for our beliefs. How are you going to respond to that? Are you going to be denying him too, that you're not really, you know, a, a follower, a believer, so that you can protect yourself from 
what's coming? Because each of us would say no. But when that moment comes, how are we going to respond? Brother Al, Shabbat Shalom. What's on your heart, brother? Shabbat Shalom. Um, it just like reminds me of a prayer like I used to pray. Uh, whatever would disqualify me on the other side of this life, uh, yeah, I should expose it in my life now, you know, deal with it now, right? Whatever it is that needs to be like dealt with or whatever it is I need to be made aware of, let it happen in here, you know, and this for me seems like, you know, what um, happened, it was, it was actually messy because you know, if he had continued in this line of thinking that was by his own strength, he had good intentions. I mean, at that moment, I don't think there was anything in his being that was, he wasn't, I, I don't believe he was speaking um, in error or he was lying, right? He was being true to what he was saying, but he didn't have the capacity. And none of us truly in our own flesh and in our own strength has the capacity. You know, just yesterday, um, night just before, um, so yesterday it was like late afternoon and like something urgent came in from work that I'm the only person that really um, does it. And I began to like a kind of fret, you know, that, oh, I hope this doesn't extend into um, sun, sun, sundown or sunset, right? And this was like a trouble in my heart. And it was by his grace that everything was sorted like before then. But these are the challenges, you know, before that time you're saying, no, this is a no-no from this time to this time, it's a no-no. But when you're faced with this kind of, um, this kind of very challenging circumstance where it seems like it's life and death, you know, that's when you begin to fret, you know, and at that point, if you're going to rely on yourself, you're going to make the wrong decision. So, you know, it just like teaches us where our reliance is meant to be on, you know, because it's just like when it says that with man, it is impossible. But with yeah, all things are possible. So it, it, it just it just highlights the need for dependence. You know, we never get to this point where we are matured and we are we can go on our own. You know, it's not like like we have children and when they are of a certain age, they they kind of start their own life, you know, without depending on you. We don't have that luxury. You know, because the devil is just waiting for us to, to, to get to get disconnected from our source, so he can destroy us. So we always have to stay connected to that source, to be dependent on him, because he has he is the only one that has the power to hold us. Um, praise yeah. you. Hallelujah, that is true. We have to have dependence on him in all situations and you know sometimes it's amazing to me how us humans if you will when we're put into these these kind of situations these moments of difficulties how we respond you know we see it even with the disciples they walked with Yahusha he prepared them for what was coming and it still happened you know but how you re how you respond and recover from that is what really truly matters, you know. Sometimes when we fail, we get discouraged with ourselves, and you know how can we how could we fail in that? We knew what was coming, we still faltered. It's happened to me before, <clears throat> so I know. You know, sometimes we're not as strong as we think we are, especially when situations come and. We're put into that moment where we have to make a decision, you know, and we see those examples in the scriptures for our, our benefit, you know, and we also see what happens after, you know, the disciples 
they didn't have a full grasp, even though he told them what was going to happen. I still think that they just didn't understand the, the fullness or the vastness of what was coming and how it would affect them. You know, their leader, their add-on, their master, their Lord, their, you know, is, is being taken from them. And now they're getting confronted. Aren't you with him? Did we see you with him? No, it wasn't me. You know, it's a, it, it's a response sometimes that, that comes out of nowhere sometimes. And how are we going to be prepared when that happens to you and I? I guess that's the, 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 the gist of what I'm seeing here. Because we all are confident in the moment when we're not dealing with a situation. But when a situation comes, and I've, and I've had some good testimony about people in, within our family that have experienced these situations, and they they responded appropriately. They trust in Yahuwah. You know, even though their their emotions and their feelings are still raw and, you know, they it ain't feeling good, but they turn to the word, they turn to prayer, they turn to fasting because they see something that's more powerful than their feelings and emotions. And that's that's a that's a difficult thing for us as humans to overcome is our emotions because we we are led by them we we react to them you know whether it's fear or or anger or whatever the the emotion is it's hard to overcome those when they rise up so you know these words that we are reading and and meditating on you know it, hopefully when that moment comes before us again that we'll react in a different way. Hallelujah. More Sister Kim. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I want to say how with Peter, whenever I read Peter, you know, so much with multiples like of his story throughout the gospel with uh, while he was with Yesh Yeshua, uh, you know, we could read it and be like, I would never do that. But whenever I read like his stories, I just, I see so much of me in it because, you know, we're saying Peter, he, he very, he has very strong feelings. And I'm also a person who has very strong feelings. Whenever I'm feeling really amped up, it's really amped up. My highs are highs, my lows are lows. You see that also with Peter, his highs are very high, his lows are very lows. And I just, Whenever I read it, I try to, I see myself in there and I try to learn from it. And I, for a while now, I feel like I'm in that state where I, you know, try not to go off of those emotions and just be off of the truth and uh, just like with Peter, he, what Kappa, I keep saying Peter just because it's a habit. And uh, you see that. At one point, Yeshua was telling him he's blessed and he was on the mountain with him when Moses and Elijah was there. And then another time he's like, Satan, get behind me or you're going to deny me three times. And it's just you see all of these weaknesses in him. But throughout all of his weaknesses, Yeshua always got glorified. He always, you know, kept kept a, he wasn't. Yeshua didn't bring him down because of his weaknesses. He only got glorified and stronger and all of them. So I really like watching his story and seeing myself in my journey with Yeshua, with him. Praise Yah. Yeah. As we look at these, these stories and these examples, it's amazing how we can see ourselves in them. And, you know, a lot of the responses we, you know, are very similar in a lot of way. But, you know, what matters is how, 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 you know, it turns out in the end, you know, you know, do we, do we end up glorifying Yahuwah or do we walk away? Do we turn away? Do we get discouraged? You know, these are real, you know, these situations are real. And, you know, when we deal with these type of problems in our lives and, and we turn the right direction and we, 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 you know, we surrender that we have failed and we surrender ourselves to him and ask him to pick us up and to guide us. He doesn't, he doesn't fail us in that way. 
and it's and it's amazing to be able to see it in others, you know, and, and to be able to encourage others when they're dealing with situations like this, you know, and praise Yah, you know, he's faithful. If we desire him and we and we pursue him even stronger after we failed, you know, he he's exalted in that and, and he has a way of allowing us to 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 experience something on a greater level because he's brought us through. These are lessons that we're learning in this life, you know, how how to how to walk appropriately, you know, and you know, a lot of us, you know, we haven't walked in the right way for a long time. And sometimes it's not easy to walk appropriately when you're in the middle of something that's really trying, you know, especially if, uh, you know, you, you don't know how to respond sometimes, you know, how should I, should I just play it off and back down, let it be cool? Or should I stand up bold and strong? Should I stand as a witness in this? And, you know, I see as we go through these and we make these these failures in our lives, you know, that we fail to, to, to respond appropriately. These are lessons that we can look back and learn. And the next time, hopefully, we'll do it in a different way. You know, we have some examples even here in our family of how they went through difficulties and and how they turned the right way and how they were restored, you know, uh, their lives were renewed and they were strengthened again. And, you know, they were healed in a lot of different ways. So, you know, praise God that we have these, these stories that we can reflect on and that we can see ourselves in them. Sister Sharon, good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Um, so my mind has been going different ways, but um, of course, as far as Peter's concerned, it seems to me that he is the example for us because it shows where he was then the growth that was given to him that he, you know, and that that um, reflects to me on my life because there are times that there are times and there have been times I could still say are that I really don't know how to address things when, you know, it comes up and I have to pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And I think that that's something that we act really have to do whenever um, an opportunity comes up to me. Now I always pray how should I do this? How, what should I say? How should I say this? And, um, so, and even in the future, when there is a time that's going to come that we will have to make a choice and it could be life or death. And will we be able to face that? Will I be able to say the right thing or do the right thing? And, um, Luke 21 and 30, 36, it says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So I think that all things have to be done in prayer, When at least for me. I have to make sure that I pray about whatever I do or whatever I say. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. I agree. You know, and that's a, a practice that we have to put into practice. You know, uh, if we start now, then it's going to become more easier for us to continue to, to do those things in those moments of difficulty and struggle. And, we're going to continue in our in our study, and 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 we're going to see that very example in in Yahusha, you know, uh, that's coming up once we finish our, our discussion on this portion. But brother Dean, what do you see, brother? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, so just um a couple of things come to mind. Um, and that is, I think when today when the uh, worship songs were on. 
one of the scriptures that popped out was Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. And it literally says, you trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Know him in all your ways and he makes all your paths straight. So what this made me think about is that there can be a danger that intimacy can make us feel that we are void of complacency. Yeah. Um, now he was so close you know, to Yahusha, yet he had become complacent. And I think sometimes that we have to be careful that, you know, because we, we have this knowledge, you know, all praises be to the Messiah, that we're on the winning team, you know, the winning side, that that, that doesn't um, become a complacency. Yeah, because the key thing for me in this uh, scripture of, you know, the Proverbs is to know him in all your ways. Now, when Yahushua says, I and the Father are one, um, he has a peace about whatever the instruction is. Yeah? And he doesn't question the instruction. Now, when you know authority is given to Yahushua, Yahushua then gives authority to us. Yeah? We are meant to be able to say, we are, we are one. Okay, So that oneness comes in the intimacy, comes in the knowing. Yeah? So, but when you know, you do not speak out of turn, you do not walk out of turn, you are in one ruach, yeah? So I think for me, this moment ex uh, exposes that sometimes there is an excitement that can override the reality, you know? There's a, there's a joy, there's an excitement, you've seen Yahusha do miracles, you've seen, but that is only a part of the story. That's not that you know. That's not the whole prophecy. <laughs> that that's just you know on the road to the you know to the destination. And I think that you know we have to continually live day by day. You know, breath by breath, prayer by prayer, and not become too complacent because we will easily forget. You know that Yahusha is not speaking out of opinion. Yeah. He's not speaking, the word is not speaking opinions. So when the word is spoken, the word is that which is etched in your heart. It, 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 it cannot be erased. It cannot be changed because emotionally it doesn't sit right with you. Yeah. Um, or because you're so attached. You know, I'm, I'm so attached to you, my family. I'm so attached to you, Husha, my savior. I'm so, it doesn't matter. The will of the Most High Yah is perfect if we believe it to be perfect then it shall come to pass regardless of whether or not we believe or not and it's either we shall be in it uh walking in it in shalom or we're going to be kicking and screaming and run the risk of missing the mark so hallelujah as you were speaking a thought came to me about partly why that might have been you know like you said they they witnessed yahusha all the miracles that he did they were never uh, taken, you know, or harmed. You know, they were always, we see, you know, Yahushua was able to escape. You know, uh, they probably took it that, you know, that no matter what, you know, I'm going to be okay because, you know, I've had this experience prior that nothing as bad has happened to me while I was with Yahushua because I don't know that they understand the depth, again, of what was coming, you know. And another verse that came to me, no matter you know, even if they kill me, I'm still going to trust them. So no matter what the situation is, our trust and our hope has to be in Yahuwah. That, you know, we're going to, if we face the reality that, what is, if the scripture is true as we believe, that it says that many of us are going to come face to face with death. We're going to be put to death for our belief. You know, so if we if we trust that the case, then, Maybe that would prepare us for when that moment comes. Are we going to stand strong or are we going to wither away and cower down and, you know, kind of deny our faith? You know, it's interesting because I've, I've thought about this many, many times in my walk and, you know, how I would respond to that. And, you know, many times I believed that I would I would remain true and faithful, but this example in, in Kepha, it, 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 it makes me question how I would respond at that moment. So, you know, I think it's good that we examine that. So, you know, if we came face to face, as Sister Sharon said, we would pray. 
you know, and, and we would ask for guidance and direction. And I believe that the shalom would come, you know, that he would give us peace about the matter that we should not fear. We don't need to fear what's coming. You know, we only got to fear the one that can kill us the second time that can destroy our, our spirit. You know, the, the flesh that can die is going to die, but you know, that second death is what really matters. That's where our fear should be. So, you know, fear of death shouldn't shouldn't bring fear. You know, we should have confidence in knowing uh, that we belong to the one that's given us eternal life and we're going to live. So praise Yah. Tatiana and Rudy, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I was listening to a 4ALC podcast this morning about the human condition and one of the verses I took down in, no, in my notes seems relevant and then so uh, keeping in mind that Yahusha is the word made flesh um, and so when he was speaking to Peter um, this is the verse uh, that came to mind is Hebrews 4 12 to 13 uh, for the word of Yah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And so... Like uh, Brother Dean was just saying that Yahusha does not speak out of opinion. So he was speaking uh, just how things are, you know, like it, it is what it is. And um, he was just letting, you know, Peter know. Uh, that's all. That's a good verse. Does relate to all of this. So praise you for his word. Sister Dolores, good morning. Shabbat shalom to you. Good morning, Shabbat Shalom, my name is Pasha. I uh, hope everyone has had a great week. Uh, in regards to what we're speaking on this morning, uh, you can't hear me, right? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, that when we're in our flesh, we're in the moment often, you know, it, it, we don't see what we have talked about or studied of walking in a righteous way, spiritual way, because we're in our flesh, as the term is 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 a uh, is coined. Something that, and, and often we have grown up in, like most, maybe the experience has been formal. You know, you do all this left crossing yourself, and you know you taught to pray in this way. So it, it's hard for us to get out of the the formal corporate versus our our spiritual walk relationship that we have with with Yah. But things, uh, nuggets of things that I've heard or learned along the way helps me. For instance, you know, you, you were talking about, um, everyone's talking about, again, the whole formal of what, you know, Kepler went through and how all this went down. But one thing that that keeps me grounded is that I remember that this is not a Ten Commandment production. My life is not. We're not gonna be and here's scene, whatever, and this goes down. The things that keep me grounded are the most simplistic things. For instance, I heard someone say one day, they said, How are you gonna, how are you going to resist Satan when you can't resist a piece of chocolate cake? So it's not always a really formal way that we go about you know, resisting the flesh. Um, it's there for us to learn and to grow, but also to keep in mind that we can also keep it simple and remember some of the everyday things because we're everyday people just to to not be in our flesh. It's to remember that, you know, resistance is challenging. It's like things that happen at work, your family, walking down the street, driving in your car. And that's how we come back to what is written, what the Father has shown us. And that's help helps keep us to uh, really strengthen ourselves and stay out of the flesh. 
Hallelujah. It is hard to resist a piece of chocolate cake sometimes, <laughs> especially especially if you've been on a diet for a while, you know. But uh, <laughs> appreciate that, sister. Sister Naomi, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, um, Elder Rick and the Mishpaka. Um, I've been thinking about this for some time and praying about it for some time now. Um, I got a verse that I'd like to share with everyone. This is going to be Luke 21, and it's going to be 14 through 17. It's therefore resolve in your hearts not to premeditate on what to answer. For I shall give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to refute or resist. And you shall also be betrayed by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. And some of you shall be put to death and you shall be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on of your head shall be lost at all. So I praise Abia for his word. It gives me courage um, for that time. And I know um, time is running out for this world. And uh, our prayers should be constantly to stay with Yahuwah, to always claim Yahusha as our master and to know that he will put the words, he will put the courage. Don't depend on yourself at all. He will do this for you because it is a promise. So I praise Abiya and he'll glorify his son, Yahushua Mashiach. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you for that verse. That's powerful. And it does bring us back to that reality of how we should act or respond in those moments. Praise Yah. He's, he's given us the answer. Once again, Vic and Cindy, good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Brother Rick, I, uh, you know, I just wanted to share that uh, I, I thank Yah, Yahu, Elohim, that uh, that even though um, the intent of our heart may be to follow Him wherever and to do whatever it takes, um, that He is merciful and and great in mercy and uh, he's given us the atoning shed blood of his only begotten son Yahushua HaMashiach uh, which atones for our sins past or sins present and sins that we're going to make tomorrow you know uh, I thank him for his, that he's merciful and he understands that our flesh is weak uh, and he gives us an opportunity to come before him, according to Psalm 51, and with the condition that if we confess, uh, that he would uh, grant us forgiveness, you know, again, through the atoning shed, blood of Yahusha. And so, um, yeah, I'm just thankful. I The verse that comes to my mind is in John 1 and 7, it's where it tells us that the blood of Yahusha Son cleanses us from every sin. So when we confess our sins to Yahweh, given of our sins and cleansed from them by the blood of Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. Definitely is a confidence that we have. Yeah. So praise Yah that we have a new covenant in that blood and uh, that we, we have confidence in our Adam, that he's with us. All right, uh, no more hands. Let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna shift the gears to our next portion of scripture. All righty, and this is going to take us where Yahusha is praying in Gethsemane. Um, and this is another portion of this that, that we need to really pay attention to here because. You know, there's some more examples of how our flesh is weak. Um, do I have anybody that'd like to read this portion of scripture for us? Brother Dean, if you would take us from 36 to 46, and then uh, we'll see what this speaks to us. 
Uh oh. I think I need uh Sister June, could you uh, unmute him so I don't have to take off the uh, share because I can't see him to take the mute off of him. Shalom, shalom. There shalom. you are. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Sister June. So it's uh, Matthew 26 from 36 to 46, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Okay. 36, 46. Okay. Then Yahusha came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the taught ones, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Kepha and the two sons of Zabdi, Zabdi. And he began to be grieved and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my being is exceedingly grieved, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And going forward a little, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I desire, but as you desire. And he came to the taught ones and found them asleep. And said to Kepha, so were you not able to watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into trial. The spirit indeed is eager, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away a second time and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, sorry, if it is impossible for this to pass, unless I drink it, let your desire be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his taught ones and said to them, still sleeping and taking rest. See, the hour has come near, and the son of Adam is delivered up into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. See, he who delivers me up has come near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you know what? While we're here, and I have you, let's let's uh, see if we can look at the account in, in Mark and see if there's any difference there. If you mind reading that, 32 to 42. Okay. Mark 14, so that, 32. Luke 14, 32. To 42. Okay. Okay, so that's Luke 14, 32. Okay. Hallelujah. And if not, while the others, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. I think you're in the wrong place, brother. I'm not sure what yes. you So Mark? Luke Mo, no, oh, Mark. Mark 14, Sorry. 32. Yes, apologies. Mark 14, 32 to 42. Okay. That's better. Okay. Hallelujah. And they came to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his taught ones, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Kepha and Jacob and Johanan. And he began to be greatly amazed and to be deeply distressed and he said to them my being is exceedingly grieved even to death stay here and watch and he went on a little and fell on the ground and was praying that if it were possible the hour might pass from him and he said Abba father all is possible for you make this cup pass from me yet not what I desire but what you desire. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Kepha, Shimon, are you sleeping? You were not able to watch one hour. Watch and pray, lest you enter into trial. The spirit indeed is eager, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake and spoke the same words. And having returned, he found them asleep again. 
for their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, and you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. See, the son of Adam is being delivered up into the hands of the sinners. Rise up, let us go. See, he who is delivering me up has drawn near. Hallelujah. All right, out of those two accounts, what is it that you're seeing, brother? A couple of things that um, is that I think is, is so important to remember, especially when we're speaking to people who, you know, claim to read the same, uh, you know, scriptures, but have a complete different um, understanding. Um, Yahusha says, rise up in, in verse 42 in Mark, rise up, let us go and see he who is delivering me up has drawn near. Okay. Um, that part there. Um, also, I think um, this idea of basically his mercy and compassion that I always used to believe that he had just come one time and saw them asleep. Yep. And was, you know, and was just said, you know, oh, couldn't you stay awake a little while? But he came three times. You know, it says that he came three times. So that's an expression of, you know, Yahuwah's mercy and Yahuwah's, Yahusha's compassion. Yeah. He came three times and gave them the instruction three times to stay awake. Yeah. Um, and also what it sh um, shows for me is um, what happens when we're leaning on our own understanding and drawing from our own strength in the midst of trials. We will not have the strength. Because I don't think that they were, you know, just in t just happily sleeping. It says that uh, it's something. There's a point where it says their their eyes were heavy or something. So this was a natural condition, yeah. But it didn't start off saying that their eyes were heavy. So at some point, um, they just didn't understand the magnitude or where to draw strength from in that moment, um, so that they could actually be obedient to the request. Yeah, and that was to stay awake. And this also reminds me of the scripture that says, um, a little sleep, a little slumber, and poverty creeps in like a thief in the night. Yeah, um, because they were meant to be staying awake so that they could be alert to the, to the tactics of the enemy. Ultimately, this is about the tactics of the enemy coming in to, you know, um, sorry, this is about, the, you know, the prophecy, Yahuwah's prophecy, but also... You know, the, the, the enemy up to his, you know, what the enemy does um, to try and uh, hinder the prophecy, to try and halt the prophecy. Um, and also maybe to also cause dissension between the believers, to make them feel down in a time when they're about to feel at their lowest anyway. You know, in that moment of them having to be corrected instead of them feeling encouraged and strong you know, in that moment when they needed to be their strongest to date, you know. So, um, yeah, um, I think, yeah, I, I think Yahuwah's mercy is in there by three times um, that they were told. But then there's a time called, you know, no more instruction. It's just go time, you know, rise, let's go. So th there's a time when you have, there's no time to even be caught in your feelings, you know, sorry. One second. So, yeah, there's no time to even be caught in your feelings. Um, there's even a time when the correction will be finished. It's just go time. And those who have, you know, enough of, of, of the enough, know him enough, will just follow. And those who are still trying to work things out will be caught up in the wind. You know, so hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Appreciate all of that. You know, again, we see the weakness of the flesh. Interesting that it was Kepha that was brought here with them, along with uh, Jacob and, and John. And, and he, he brought them, you know, so that they would be prepared. You know, if we, if we, if we look at, you know, when he came and found them sleeping and he told them, watch and pray, lest you enter into trial. 
he's telling them he's praying he's, and we've discussed this already about being in prayer and and the importance of this but watching and praying so unless we enter into the prayer because the, you know the ruach or our spirit if you will is is eager but the flesh is weak and we see as you said three times he came to him and found him sleeping you know how long do you know does it take for us to 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 get weary and to get weak and fall asleep and and you know and get dismayed if you will about things you know they came here to support him he he brought them specifically you know up with him for a purpose and they didn't and they failed in that once again you know and 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 so as we continue to to look at and examine these 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 people you know his disciples you know in their actions and how they, how they responded and how they how they failed him in so many ways you know yahusha asked his disciples to stay alert in prayer with him for you know the one last night and they couldn't do it how committed are are we to prayer you know it, we spoke about it. We've heard a couple already mention it, you know, that this is the, the, the lesson that they've learned when they're in the midst of a trouble is that they turn to prayer. But how seriously do we take our search for Yahuwah's will? You know, this is what Yahusha, you know, in this time, he knew his, his time, the hour was up. It was time, you know, and he's, and he's going and, and taking it to prayer before the Father. So, you know, how seriously do we try to avoid temptation? How sorrowful does it make us when we let Yahushua down? There's lots to think about, you know, looking at these scriptures, you know. The disciples are about to go through an intense trial, and they will fail. You know, before that happens, Yahushua tried to prepare them for it. You know, he, he it's, it's really cool that, you know he's he's trying to give them advanced preparation so that they are aware so they would so that they wouldn't fail but they don't know what is about to happen or what they need to do to prepare for it sounds very familiar to you and I yeah we don't always know how or how or what to do when troubles come so he shows a few of them you know that you know wouldn't it be wouldn't it be great if you know if we were able to have him there and and Yahushua came down and he showed us what to do so that we could be ready for the trials that we're about to go through? The text we read today is for our training. You know, Yahushua trained the disciples and, and he's training us too. He's trying to prepare us for our 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 day of, of trial that's gonna come. See, everything has been done to prepare for Yahushua's betrayal, except one thing. Before Yahushua is betrayed, he wants to go to Yahuwah in prayer. An example for you and I. This will be the last time that Yahushua would withdraw to prayer before being arrested. You know, in this text, uh, we read about Yahushua facing sorrow. He's struggling with the pain and the agony of betrayal arrest, humiliation, and suffering on the stake. He knows these things are about to come. So how did he choose to fight against his sorrow? He had time to escape. He could have prepared to fight, but he chose instead to pray. So once Yahusha and all his disciples made it to Gethsemane, he told his disciples to stay in one location while he, Kepha, James, and, and John went a bit further. Then Yahushua showed, you know, his three disciples what was on his heart. And in this text, it appears that Yahushua lets go of the restraints of his sorrow. He was distressed. He was anxious and in agony over what would happen to him and his disciples. You know, he was, he was concerned for his disciples in this time as well, not only for himself. Yahushua wasn't the, the upset type, you know. He knew everything that would happen before it happened. And he always was ready for anything. But knowing what was about to happen was the worst part in this case. Knowing that he would be mocked and humiliated, knowing that those that he loved would fall away because of him. 
and knowing that it would all end with torture on the stake is having its effect on Yahushua's body. You know, he was feeling the emotions too. Some things are outside of the control of human beings. Sometimes the body has a mind of its own. And it's debilitating. Sometimes some people, they're, they're completely paralyzed by what goes on. But you know, there's a scripture in Hebrews 5, 7, I think it goes through 10. It says, and in the days of his flesh, Yahushua offered up prayer and supplication with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. He was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him, being designated by Yahuwah a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. You know, the text displays what Yahushua was doing. He offered prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to Yahuwah. Yahushua, who healed thousands and won every argument against the religious leaders, he cried loudly over what was about to go through. You know, he, he knew the torment of what was going to go on. And, and we read what he says to the Father. He cries out in prayer multiple times. But it was his the will of the Father what he desired most. Even though his flesh was like, mm, I don't want to do this. But not my not my will, but yours, Father. What a tremendous example this is for us. How often do we face trials that deliver, you know, that, that debilitate us? You know, they paralyze us. Sometimes, you know, things come and we don't know how to handle it. Sometimes we don't know what to do. You know, it 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 just puts us in a place of of, of fear. And if we knew what would happen. We might put on a show in front of our friends and family to keep them from getting worried. But Yahushua shows us that we don't have to put on a show in front of Yahuwah. We can let Yahuwah see our deepest concerns and struggles. Yahushua exemplifies that for us. He wanted his disciples to know that he understood what that was like. You know, he was human. He, he feels the same emotions as you and I do. You know, so... When we compare this to the disciples, we see that they aren't sorrowful. They're asleep. They aren't concerned about the huge trials and tests that they will face. Can we relate to that? We don't always have a full understanding of what's coming. Did you ever stop to think about why they aren't concerned? They don't believe in the spiritual warfare that is taking place. Yahushua told them it's about to happen, but they can't even see it. Often I think that Hasatan, he wants us to be like these disciples. He wants us to live carefree because that makes us easy targets. Yahushua shows us that we need a deep concern over the spiritual trials and tests that we are about to face. Then he takes those concerns to Yahuwah and he asks for strength. How often do you and I do that? You know, do we, all, do we go to him when we're in the midst of a trouble, of trial? and ask for strength, ask for direction and guidance on what we should do, how we should respond. As the scripture that was brought forth, you know, we don't have to worry about those things if we trust in him. If we are, if we really truly believe that we are one with him and that he is one with us, he's going to lead us, he's going to empower us, he's going to strengthen us. See, my soul is very sorrowful even to death, he tells him. He's telling them that I'm feeling this. Can you pray with me? And yet they couldn't do it. He's asking his father, if it's even possible, let the cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You know, these are powerful examples for you and I. And praise Yah that, you know, we can look at this and we can see. Brother Dean, you have something to share on that? Shalom. Um, I think that that just <clears throat> reminded me about, you know, this, this, what it really means to be the body, you know, um, because they were not allowed. He was, he was saying, don't be absent from me. You know, don't be absent from me. Um, because if they were, if they were being the body, they would feel it and they would not have been able to sleep. 
they would not have been able to sleep. They, they would either be panicking or praying, but they wouldn't be sleeping, you know. Um, so, yeah, it just, you know, when I think of, you know, y y Yahusha, you know, being the head, <clears throat> you know, and us being the body, you know, um, our high priest and, you know, us being the royal priesthood. If we are truly, if we know our roles, then we then we have less we have less to worry about. If we don't know our roles, this not not knowing the title, forget the title, know the role that you must play, you know. Um, but I think that being a follower be, became the exciting thing, you know, um, or or even be be a martyr, yeah. But don't, but, but he's saying, know me. He's saying before all of these titles that excite you, know me and know my, in all your ways, know me. And then you, 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 you don't have to query or question or lean on your own understanding. We will, we will walk in a card. So hallelujah. You know, as we continue to look at how Yahusha is an example to us what he what he knew was coming and how he responded to that that what was coming to him that's a powerful example you know you know you think about yahusha's prayer to yahuwah it's hard not to notice his submission in that you know yahusha knew that his suffering had a purpose and he wanted yahuwah's will to be accomplished but he asked Yahuwah to find another way. But yet he recognizes that Yahuwah is over him. And he tells Yahuwah not to do what he wants, but whatever Yahuwah wants. You know, these are words at the heart of what it means to be a follower of Mashiach. He's our example. This is such a, an excellent example for us. Yahusha doesn't want to die, but he's willing to die for Yahuwah's glory. You know. We read it last week, you know, that was what that, that was what Yahushua wanted to do is to glorify the Father in this. You know, he was preparing Yahushua to be a sacrifice, to to be able to, you know, enter into this this renewed covenant with for you and I to be one with them. And we see when Yahushua is being so submissive, we need to ask ourselves, why don't we have a submissive heart like Yahushua. You know, instead of looking at ourselves, we're looking to the Father for his will in our lives because we don't always know what that is. And sometimes these situations that we're put in are there to perfect us. You know, have you ever imagined a, a picture perfect, you know, you know, what, what, what is the, the perfect picture in, in your head of the ways things should go? You know, you think think you can look at and prepare and, and you think how things are going to be in your head. But what if Yahuwah's word contradicts that idea that's in our head of how things should go? He has a different, a different outcome in plan for you and I. You know, it's easy for us to dismiss Yahuwah's word and hold on to our own ideals. That's what the disciples did. But that's not what Yahushua did. He changed his ideals to include what he knew Yahuwah wanted. See, Yahushua, Yahushua doesn't assume that Yahuwah's will is different, nor does he demand Yahuwah to change his will to match his ideals, which is what people do today. See, Yahushua asks Yahuwah to make his will happen differently, but he ultimately submits to whatever Yahuwah wants. You know, Yahushua shows us how to pray in trials. You know, we need to believe the trials and tests will come. We need to believe that Yahuwah still cares for us and he works for the good when we suffer. You know, when we go through trials, it's for our good. We grow from that. We learn from that. We need to submit to whatever Yahuwah's will is for our lives. And to find out what that is takes prayer. Sometimes it takes fasting and prayer together. And Yahushua recognizes this as he asks Yahuwah to take away the suffering, but recognizing that nothing is impossible for Yahuwah. But he knows that Yahuwah knows best. So, you know, he desires for Yahuwah's will to be done no matter what. 
I think there's so much for us to learn from these these verses that we've read today that should take us to another place in, in our walk, our trust, our submission, our obedience, our prayer life, you know. Of course, we're supposed to be praying daily, but do we pray when we get, when we get into a situation? Is our is our first thought to go to prayer, to ask for direction? It should be. That's why we learn these lessons through studying like this. Vic and Cindy, yeah. What you got in your your thoughts this morning? We got a few minutes before we got to shut down. So, I just wanted to share Hebrews twelve one through four. And many years ago, verse four uh, was like a splash of cold water in my face as we were going through some some pretty strong issues in our family. And it set me straight. But uh, let me read from one. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahusha, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, this sounds like an oxymoron, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. That verse did it. At that instance, it gave me a rude awakening in the best of ways. Hallelujah, that's a beautiful verse. I just pray that, you know, these words today have really spoken to your hearts and, you know, that these will be at the forefront of our minds and whatever time of difficulty comes to each of us. So praise the Father for his word, for his son, for his Ruach in our lives to give us strength and guidance and to give us that confidence in him. So. Thank you all for your input today. It's been a beautiful discussion. It's been very edifying. And now it's time for us to turn it over to Sister Marcia for our announcements. Shabbat shalom, sister. Shabbat shalom to you and to everyone.